Imagine if your entire immediate family and most of your relatives suffer from migraines. For people like the young woman you're about to meet, this is a reality. Her family story sheds a light on the inheritability of migraines and how scientists can harness our genetic footprint to help find treatments for the pain. Migraines have completely controlled my life. I hate to say it, but it's true. Everything I do is, is planned around migraines. 23-year-old Kate is not like most college students, enjoying the freedom and fun of campus life. Because on most days when she's at school, and even when she's at home, she is in pain. If I go out, I have to very carefully, I have water, I have food, I make sure that I've rested beforehand uh, and I have an escape route if I, if I start to feel terrible. Um, and I don't really go out that much because it's hard. It's hard to be around a lot of people, so I'm very um, reclusive. <laughs> so it's impacted, had an effect on your relationships and friendships. Yeah, yeah. Um, it's too difficult to like go to a party. That's like just not fun for me. So I spend a lot of time by myself. Kate's struggle with migraines is one her mother, Jill, knows all too well, because migraine runs in her family. I have migraine, my mom has migraine. From what I understand, I never met her, but her mom mm. used to say I have a sick headache and would retreat, and now we know that that was kind of code for migraine. What's more, Kate's other grandmother, her father, brother. Like, I feel Dear. like a slight throbbing and sometimes I'll ignore it, but I know it's going to get worse. If I and don't. many cousins also have suffered oh, from migraines. Her father Rick says it was worse for him when he was a teenager. Tylenol had just come out, so I don't know what year that was, but that was like miracle. Oh, great, now there's something more than just aspirin that I can take. And I remember that being sort of a, you know, the, the promised land, if you will. But for Kate, there has been no medication or treatment that has helped ease the pain. Her childhood was marked by frequent visits to neurologists, migraine specialists, and hospitals, desperate to find relief. My 17-year-old, 18-year-old, 20-year-old, for days and days in the dark with her head on the pillow saying I'm dying. And me just, all I can do is kind of, you know, lay down next to her, hold her, rub her head, give her a nice pack. There's nothing I can do. That's hard. Today, Kate says she lives with migraine pain 24 seven. I guess we've uh, come to describe it as like a dimmer switch. So it, you can, it goes up, sometimes it's worse, sometimes it's better, but it's always on. Always on. How do you deal with it? How do you cope with it? <laughs> I don't know. I, yeah. I'm, I guess I chose one thing to focus on, which for me is cool, because I like learning. Um, so I cope by being really good at school and sort of forgetting about everything else. Kate's quick trips to and from school most often leave her recuperating at home in the dark, unable to get out of bed. So why are Kate's symptoms so much more severe than the rest of her family's? A recent publication actually looking at the blood of over 375,000 people, um, of which tens of thousands had migraine, actually found that there were 38 genes, variations in 38 genes that increased the risk of developing migraine. She may have inherited variations in multiple genes, which when added together, allow the disease to be expressed in a much more severe way. It is the perfect storm. Dr. Dodick says a child has a 50% chance of inheriting migraine if one parent has the familial form of the disease. That jumps to as high as a 100% chance if both parents have it, as in Kate's case. How do you deal with people who don't understand if you have, it's an illness. And any other illness, if you are going through cancer like I did and lost my hair, people can understand that. But there seems to be, as your mother was saying earlier, oh, come on, just tough just it out. Tough, tough yeah. it out, tough it out. So yeah. how do you handle it when, and make people understand, no, it's not that way. Well, honestly, I don't really tell people. Because um, I can tell when somebody thinks I'm lying. 
and I don't want to, you know, subject myself to that. Migraine right now is synonymous in the, in the public with a headache. Okay, maybe it's a bad headache, but it's just a headache. Well, it's so much more than a headache. It's an inherited neurological disease with functional and structural consequences on the organ that's most affected, which is the brain. For now, Kate is focusing on something else she says she has inherited from her family, resilience. Buoyed by their support and love, she graduates from college this year with a degree in psychology. She has already interned with a neurologist, helping research and write papers on migraine. What it kind of amazes me about her is that most of her doctors will say people in her condition don't get out of bed. And yet Kate, is, as much as she suffers, has managed to do a lot. What is your message for somebody seeing this who is walking in similar shoes as you? Don't let other people's impression of your illness define you, because I've really struggled with that. So don't let other people define your experience. Um, and to just keep going, just keep going. So how well are you managing your migraines? Go to webmd.com slash migraine to take an assessment. You'll get personalized results with strategies to help you live better.